We are just days away from AIDS Walk New York, which helps raise awareness for those living with HIV and AIDS. CBS 2's Vanessa Murdoch spoke with long-term survivors who share their stories in hopes of helping others. AIDS is still around. It's still raging. Long-term survivors Kenneth D. Teasley and Scott Hamilton live with HIV and have for decades. Scott recalls sharing the news he was HIV positive with loved ones and co-workers in the early 2000s. I didn't lose a friend and I only got warmth and beauty out of it. He knows not everyone gets such responses, but he wants those recently diagnosed to not assume they'll be shunned. I would say once you get over the stigma, uh, find a good doctor. Uh, and work with them. Shortly after Teasley learned he was HIV positive, he was also diagnosed with kidney disease. He's lived with both for 29 years. In 2016, I was called into the office and asked if I would want to participate, and I said yes. Uh, two months later, I received my transplant, uh, about 10 days after my 50th birthday. In 2016, he became the first HOPE Act organ recipient in New York State. HOPE stands for HIV Organ Policy Equity. Teasley received a kidney from an HIV positive donor. What did I just do? This is my worst nightmare, but it became the greatest thing that ever happened to me. He became an outspoken advocate for organ donation and receipt. I felt it was someone's responsibility to tell other people who are HIV that this option was available. Teasley also dedicated his time to research with the SHARE project, survivors of HIV advocating for research equity. A survey just completed revealed. People with HIV, they, yes, they want a cure, um, but they also want to make sure that their doctors will be able to treat them. Survivors 50 and older want focus and research on cognitive decline. As we age, um, it's actually earlier than the regular population, at least five to 10 years earlier. Both Teasley and Hamilton worry about it. They're both over the age of 50, making them representatives of the largest group of people living with HIV and AIDS, according to Krishna Stone with GMHC. And these folks are, along with aging, you know, physically and, um, and psychologically, uh, they are also dealing with HIV and AIDS related stigma, which is tragically still around 42 years later in this epidemic. Stone says they may experience an increase in depression, isolation, along with other mental health and substance abuse issues. This is why GMHD has several programs dedicated to an aging population. Socialization is key to supporting uh, long-term survivors. The Healthy Aging Project offers workshops and support groups. The Terry Brené and David Bozier Hub for Long-Term Survivors helps those diagnosed prior to 1996 lead healthy, happy lives. The Buddy Program uses trained volunteers to provide emotional support, visit with clients, or go on outings with them. And Thriving at 50 and Beyond for Black and Latinx Survivors offers discussion groups and webinars. Hamilton says GMH services prove incredibly beneficial to him. The long-term survivor group was really, really instrumental to me coming out of COVID, social interaction, trying to meet other people that have HIV. His relationship with GMHC started in the early 2000s at AIDS Walk New York. He walked last year too. It was a joyous occasion being in Central Park and walking around with other people that um, are there to support you. And plans on rocking the park this weekend. AIDS Walk New York takes place this Sunday, May 21st. Thousands will flood Central Park to take part in GMHC's largest fundraiser. This is the 38th annual AIDS Walk New York. Stone says the walk offers a beautiful opportunity to remember those lost, to celebrate how far we've come in the fight against HIV AIDS, while raising awareness of how much work still needs to be done, especially for an aging population. From the Garment District, Vanessa Murdoch, CBS 2 News. And CBS 2 is a proud sponsor of this weekend's AIDS Walk. We'd love for you to join in. For more information on signing up, head over to CBSNewYork.com. And if you can't make it, be sure to watch the opening ceremony this Sunday morning, 915, streaming only on CBS News New York.